you have the time of your life. We 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 Saviors to lay all of my biases on the table. I have not enjoyed a Green Day album since 1997's Nimrod. And yes, <laughs> that's right, I uh, hated American Idiot. Cult classic, everyone loves it, I think it sucks. Uh, I felt it was a boring album which superficially had an anti-war message but it was so watered down that it was utterly uninspiring and uh, didn't do anything to help stop the war if we're being real. <laughs> if you want an album that does a way better job at capturing the early aughts and America's involvement in both Iraq and Afghanistan, I would recommend Crimes by the Blood Brothers. Much more punk, much more devastating, and uh, yeah, was just an overall better experience than American Idiot. Green Day also remains one of the worst bands I ever saw live. My buddy had an extra ticket, and I really wanted to see the opener, which was Jimmy Eat World. So I went, and uh, this must have been in 2005, so it was right around the American Idiot time period. And Green Day spent most of their set just going, Hey! Ho! Hey! Ho! Oh, and I was just like, play your fucking music already! <laughs> With all that being said, Dookie was one of the first albums I ever owned. Well, actually, my dad owned it, but uh, I listened to it way more than he did. And it still holds up to this day. And so I do have a nostalgic pull towards them, even if it has been decades since they've released anything that's made me feel anything but contempt. And so, with Saviors, the best I can say is that I, it could have been worse. The album opens with the lead single, The American Dream Is Killing Me. It has a catchy hook, a cute Beatles-influenced bridge, but the lyrics are terrible. I do appreciate the underlying critique of American capitalism, but the pedophile line in particular is just terrible. I get what Billy was trying to do with that line, you know, referencing Epstein or any of that kind of crap, but now he's going to be forced to sing live constantly that he is a pedophile, and why would he do that to himself? We then get the punchy Look Ma No Brains. It again is a decent track. The chorus in particular is catchy and fun. Lyrically, the song is just kind of silly. He's just singing about being dumb and silly and yeah, it's it's all right. And you know, it it at least has a bit more of a punk sound to it. Next, we get the terrible song. <laughs> Bobby Socks. This seems to be a simple little love song, but I am not sure why Billy is screeching throughout it. The song is really this trashy power pop song, as if they're pretending to be Weezer. We even get pathetic lines about making out in a cemetery, like, oh, aren't we so cool? We're making out in a cemetery. I'm 50 years old. It just isn't cute. It feels juvenile for their age, and it sounds bad. The next song, One-Eyed Bastard, is straight up just a Pink ripoff. Yes, Pink, the pop star, for, uh... Her song, So What? Like immediately upon listening to the opening ripped of the song, I was like, that's So What by Pink. And then I found out that everyone else agrees to this online. So it's not like I'm the only one hearing this. A lot of people hear Pink here. Then they decide to ruin the song further by singing Bada Boom Bada Bing as if this was some like commercial for Eastside Mario's. The song lyrically seems to be about revenge, but it's so vague as to just be a kind of silly fight song. The bridge is also lame as hell. Uh, they try to make it sound like dark, oh it got dark all of a sudden, but it just comes off as so hokey. However, Green Day then pulls off one of their best songs in years with Dilemma. 
a banger about being an alcoholic and struggling with relapsing. It's catchy, it's touching, the hooks feel earned and crunchy, and this feels personal. Like, you can actually hear how personal it is in his voice, especially in contrast with all the other songs off this album. The song 1981 is okay, the music is fine, the lyrics about a girl rocking out and reliving some nostalgia is fine with callbacks to Cold War era stuff, it's kinda cute. The song Goodnight Adeline begins like a slowed down version of When I Come Around by, uh, by Green Day. <laughs> off their Dookie album, but yeah, they're kind of ripping themselves off. But then it turns into this sappy power pop ballad, and it's a bit of a snooze fest. I then enjoyed the track Coma City. It reminds me of something, uh, but I can't quite place it. However, the lyrics touch on American gun culture. It's also critical of the police, and there's this great line about us bankrupting the planet for assholes in space. And you know, I just have to love uh, a dig at Musk and Bezos, which again, like this song alone is way more political than anything off of American Idiot, in my opinion. The song Corvette Summer is bad. Uh, <laughs> it sounds like the theme song for a 90s sitcom that was canceled. And the chorus is cringy as hell. There's some cowbell in the mix. Yeah, I just hate the song. Continuing with the theme of this album sounding like other stuff, the melody for Susie Chapstick sounds like the song Dilemma by Nelly featuring Kelly Rowland. All I think about is you. It is also super sappy and cringy, and I don't like it. <laughs> Strange Days Are Here to Stay uh, feels derivative of 90s rock, but I can't quite place it. He sings about grandma being on drugs, David Bowie is dead, aren't these days so strange? I guess it's trying to be quirky, but it just doesn't work, it feels dated. And like, if you want quirk, go check out Cheek Face, they did a way better job at this. Something about the opening riff to Living in the 20s reminds me of Hate to Say I Told You So by The Hives but like crappier? The lyrics on this song though are much better. I did love the line about Billy fucking a robot senseless. Uh, <laughs> it actually lives up to Billy playing with these futuristic themes about our current decade and how weird it is. We then get the song Father to a Son and like, I am a parent. I have a son. I would never write a song like this for him. <laughs> Uh, he would probably cringe inside out, and uh, yeah, it's just sappy in all the wrong ways, and the orchestration in the song just reminds me of uh, Aerosmith, especially off of, and I don't want to miss a thing. It's, uh, yeah, I just, again, what, like, why do they make songs like this? <laughs> The title track, Saviors, is very forgettable. Uh, in fact, I don't even know what to say about it. It's just a, a bleh of a song. The album then ends with Fancy Sauce, and this feels like it's supposed to be some sort of, like, throwback to Basket Case with Billy singing about being in the loony bin. But my god, this song is played if, as if it's supposed to end the album with this epic conclusion, but... It sounds so stale and boring, with Billy chanting that we all die young. But Billy, you're like 51, dude. <laughs> I mean, if you died now, you would still be pretty young, all things considered. Like, you still have some good years in you, likely, you know? But like, you, yeah, who is this for? Who, why, like, why are you writing like you're, you're a kid? Yeah, I, I wasn't feeling this album. There's one song uh, I loved, a couple, well, maybe two songs that I loved, and a couple I was met about, and then the rest was just either super derivative or super boring, or even both. It also felt much more like a power pop album than a pop punk one, which isn't a bad thing, but we already have Weezer making some stale power pop, so stay in your lane, Green Day. <laughs> Anyway, jokes aside, I would give this album a 2 out of 10.
What did you think of this album? Did you like it? Did you hate it? What did you like better than this album? Because so far, it's my worst reviewed album of this year. Um, so I think it's my worst reviewed album ever, actually, since I started this account. So, so Green Day, you did it. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs>